We now have the audio of a damning phone call in which Donald Trump's former lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, explicitly dangled a quid pro quo to pressure Ukrainian officials to interfere in the 2020 election to help Trump and hurt Joe Biden. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As we all know, Rudy is currently under what we can only assume is a very serious criminal investigation, given that they raided his home and office and seized his electronic devices. This investigation could very well land Rudy in jail, according to another former Trump associate who's already been there. Investigating Donald Trump as prosecutors ramp up their investigation into the former president. Another name always comes up, doesn't it? Rudy Giuliani. Could the former mayor end up in prison? The FBI is not raiding his home without having extremely significant documentation information within which to pursue this. There's no way in the world that they're going to let him off the hook. What Rudy needs to do is like what I did. You need to take responsibility for what you did wrong. What Rudy needs to do, and this is my speech to Rudy and to, you know, and to anybody else, they have him. And so if he's looking to protect himself so that he doesn't end up spending the rest of his life in prison, Right. He may want to actually start to cooperate. Somehow Michael Cohen has become the wise elder statesman of former Trump goons. He used to be the intimidating mafia-style bagman, and now he's like a guidance counselor sitting backwards on a chair to give Rudy a pep talk. You gotta straighten out your life, man. You could be somebody, but if you keep hanging out with the wrong crowd, you're gonna find yourself working down at the gas station for the rest of your life. But I love the gas station. That's where I get my hair dye. It's fitting that Cohen Looks like a bargain bin Ray Romano now because he sounds like he's giving brotherly advice to Robert. Ah, oh, Robert, you gotta take responsibility uh, for what you do. You gotta tell Ma you broke a vase. Raymond, don't tell Ma about the vase, Raymond. And we have heard the feedback and understand those impressions are polarizing. So do please go to at CaptainPolls on Twitter where you can either vote everybody loves Seth's Raymond or everybody hates fun. So if you take Cohen's word for it, Rudy could very well end up in jail. And I know we've been saying some version of that sentence about a bunch of different Trump cronies for over four years, and yet somehow it feels like they all evade accountability. I mean, Steve Bannon's out there just doing a podcast, like a 22-year-old stand-up, and looking like he's about to film a scene in the new Aquaman where he plays, I don't know, a guy who guards a sea cave, despite the fact that he got arrested by the Postal Service Police Force on a Chinese billionaire's yacht. And the same thing that actually happened, and not, as I first thought, a lyric from the Don Henley song, Boys of Summer. I mean, he got arrested by postal cops on a Chinese billionaire's yacht. Don't look back. You can never look back. That probably won't even make it into the history books about the Trump era because there's just too much to cover. And it's such a bummer because there should be an entire chapter devoted to the fact that the Postal Service has a police force. Personally, if I were in high school, I'd be psyched to learn there are Postal Service cops. If I found about that in 10th grade history class, there's a good chance I'd be out there right now walking the beat in those short shorts with my bucket hat and a badge, solving mail crimes with my unorthodox method, and the chief would always be trying to muzzle me, saying, Myers, I got the mayor breathing down my neck thanks to your stunt. And I'd say, what am I supposed to do? Just cram the whole Pottery Barn catalog through that tiny slot? I had to break those windows. And he'd say, you got to fly right or I'll have your badge. And I'd say to him, sorry, chief, but I'm like an envelope with photos inside. I do not bend. You know, I should probably stop before I give away the entire plot of my new collaboration with Dick Wolf, Chicago Postal Service Police Force. The cheapskates at NBC would only pay for one of the duns. <laughs> Chicago Postal Service Police Force is just one of the many ways, along with my new company, My Zipper, and my Broadway musical, Cicada Cicada, that I'm soon going to be the richest man in the world. Anyway, what was I talking about? All yeah, right, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> So who knows? Maybe Cohen's wrong and Rudy will end up fine like the others. But I just can't imagine the feds raiding Rudy Giuliani's home and office and finding nothing incriminating. I mean, forget Ukraine and quid pro quos. He's probably got a fridge full of whitefish he stole from Zabar's or a sink full of unpaid parking tickets he tried to stuff into the garbage disposal. Only remember he doesn't have one. He's probably breaking all kinds of co-op board rules, too, especially with that welcome mat. And you know he probably has neighbors that are Happy to rat on him. Maybe a guy who, and I'm just spitballing here, is in a bathrobe and a Yankees hat. He's eating a bagel. Hey, you guys look in Rudy's apartment? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because last week, you know, he woke me up at 3 a.m. He asked me to hold his Bitcoin for him in case the cops came. It was just a duffel bag of old Subway tokens. Also, 
Do you know he married his cousin? <laughs> One sign that the investigation is serious is that federal agents seized his electronic devices, and apparently he had a lot of them. According to a court filing last month, prosecutors seized 18 electronic devices, including phones and computers belonging to Giuliani, as well as certain employees of his firm. All right, first of all, what 77-year-old man has that many electronic devices? Yeah, Chief, we found three phones, two iPads, a Palm Pilot, an Atari 2600, three blood pressure cuffs. Myers, I thought I told you you were off this case. The Postal Service Police Force are never off the case. Was that the same done or the back done? So I can only get each one one time. Also, I'm sorry, Rudy Giuliani has employees. Can you imagine working for this guy? Hey, honey, I'm gonna be home late tonight. Yeah, the boss thought he had reservations at Morton's, but it, uh, it just turns out he bought some salt. <laughs> I, well, I'm laughing, too! I can't picture Rudy actually being in charge of people. When I imagine him employing someone, I just assume he pulls aside a kid on the street and flips him a nickel to run an errand for him like he's Chaz Palmateri in a Bronx tale. Hey, kid, take this briefcase full of cash down to the docks. You come back alive, I might have something bigger for you. And now we may be getting a better idea of what exactly federal agents might have found on all those devices. Let's first take a trip down memory lane, back to the first impeachment of Donald Trump. You might remember the central allegation that during an official phone call with the president of Ukraine, Trump had tried to extort Ukraine and get them to interfere in the 2020 election by digging up dirt on Biden. We all read the transcript where it was very clear that what Trump was doing was dangling a quid pro quo, and yet Trump denied it, uttering the same refrain so many times it almost started to sound like a religious mantra you'd hear on the street from some weird cult member trying to convert you. There was no quid pro quo. There was nothing. There was no quid pro quo at all. If you remember at the beginning, it was quid pro quo. But listen to this. There is no pro quo. That sounds like something you'd say when you get stopped on your way to work by some German tourists in Times Square. Excuse me, can you tell us what to find the M&M store? Uh, scusi, no pro quo. Ah, uh, the good old days, huh? So quaint. Back when the biggest scandal in politics was the president trying to extort a foreign country. Before we were all trapped in our homes for a year to avoid a deadly plague and a violent mob tried to overthrow democracy. Don't look back, you can never look back. Look, I'm sorry all my references lately are for 50-year-old men, but look at my audience right now. I mean, I bring in younger people, but their little hands can't hold all the cue cards. Now, obviously, you don't have to be a lawyer to guess that a quid pro quo sounds super illegal, so that was their line. There was no quid pro quo, but now we have damning new audio tapes of a phone call Rudy Giuliani had with a Ukrainian official in 2019, in which it definitely sounds like there was a quid pro quo. CNN today obtained audio of a 2019 phone conversation between Rudy Giuliani um, and an advisor to the president of Ukraine. In that conversation, which again took place in 2019, Mr. Giuliani can be heard pressuring the Ukrainian government that their president must publicly announce a sham investigation into some alleged wrongdoing by Joe Biden. The audio obtained exclusively by CNN is from a roughly 40-minute call between Giuliani, a U.S. diplomat, and a Ukrainian official. All right, first of all, how is it that every time these guys do something shady or legal, they get caught on tape? At this point, they're less like politicians and more like Twitch streamers. Hey, guys, Brad here, about to bribe a foreign country to interfere in our elections. Figured I'd go live. Also, I'm going to try another speed run on Super Mario Brothers. I keep getting eaten by the chain chop, which totally blows. We, on purpose, didn't give Wally lines today, because when we do, we have to pay him extra money. And... I'm trying to save as much money as possible so that NBC will let me buy an MC Hammer sample. And I'm getting as creative as I can. Like the other day I brought our budget to our line producer, Jen, and I said, hey, right here, there's all this money for suits and I'm not wearing suits anymore, so couldn't we use that money to pay for MC Hammer? And she just looked at it and you know what she said to me? You can't touch this. <laughs> Also, my sympathies to the Ukrainian official. This call was 40 minutes long, 40 minutes. If I'm on the phone for more than three minutes, it ruins my entire day. 
The only time I'm ever on the phone that long is if I'm fighting with the automated customer service agent at Verizon. I just want to cancel my service. I heard you want to upgrade your service. Is that right? No, I said cancel my service. I heard you want to add stars for $15 a month. Is that right? No, I want to cancel. I heard you want to purchase Wedding Crashers 2 on demand. Is that right? Yes, I do. Can we just take a moment to acknowledge that the rumors of a Wedding Crashers sequel are finally gaining steam mere months after we started referencing the original on the show for literally no reason. Well, not no reason. The reason is there's no audience here to say, Jesus, enough. Still, you're welcome. You know, I don't know much about how the sequel got started, but I bet the conversation was a little something like this. Buddy, 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 we got to shoot this sequel. People have waited long enough. They want to know if we're still crashing. I'm not sure, man. I feel like we'd be messing with the integrity of the original. Anyway, uh, where was it? All right, Rudy. <laughs> the fact that the phone call was 40 minutes long means there's lots of damning stuff in there. For example, Rudy had this insane theory that it was actually Ukraine that interfered in the 2016 election to hurt Trump, and he wanted Ukrainian officials to investigate that theory. Way back in last November, I got information from a reliable investigator, international investigator, that there was a certain amount of activity in Ukraine during the 2016 election that was, that involved Ukrainian officials and Ukrainian, mostly officials, being asked by our embassy and possibly by other official, American officials Basically, I mean, they, uh, the, the, the statement was to produce dirt on uh, then-candidate Trump and Paul Manafort. I have a feeling I know who this international investigator was. That, that would be me. I'm the one who told Rudy Ukraine interfered in the election to hurt Trump. I heard it from Sidney Powell and Hugo Chavez in a secret meeting that was recorded by Italian satellites. But also, you got to remember, I'm real tired all the time because my pillow sucks. Plus, I sleep in the woods and I got really nervous because of all the bears. <laughs> So that's, let's see, that's Lindell, uh, Vaughn, Wilson, Romano. Did the Smithsonian ask for anything else, or did we just send this up? <laughs> I'd sell an NFT of this closer look, but I already got too much money! <laughs> but then Rudy got down to business and made it clear that what he and Trump wanted was for Ukraine's president to make a public statement declaring that they were opening an investigation into Joe Biden. And all we need, all we need from the president is to say, I'm going to put an honest prosecutor in charge. He's going to investigate and dig up the evidence that presently exists. And is there any other evidence about involvement of the 2016 election? And then the Biden thing has to be run out. I don't know if it's true or not. No, you don't. These guys can't even bring themselves to believe their own BS. This is how they always do it. They float insane theories and then cover themselves by saying they're just asking questions like they're gossipy high school sophomores. You need to break up with Todd ASAP because I heard he went to Jenny's Lake House last weekend and told Brad that Karen told Michael, who told Emma's teammates, cousins, brother's mom, that she has a crush on him. I don't know if it's true. And it was clear what they were doing was shady and that they knew it was shady because they all talk in that vague, mafia-esque tone where they never actually demand something explicitly, but they make it very clear that what they're asking for is a quid pro quo. If he could make some statement at the right time that he supports a fair, honest law enforcement system and that these investigations go wherever they have to go, it's going to be run by honest people, that would clear the air uh, really well. And I think it would make it possible for me to come and make it possible, I think, for me to talk to the president and see what I can do about making sure that whatever misunderstandings are put aside. And maybe even, uh, I kind of think that this, is, this, this could be a good thing for having a much, a much better relationship where we really understand each other. If he could say something like that on his own in the conversation, it would go a long way We'll go a long way with the president to solve the problems.
It would go a long way to solve the problems. Rudy sounds like he should be wearing a tracksuit and running his fingertip along the bar in a New Jersey restaurant saying, this is a nice place, nice and flammable, if you know what I mean. Also, I love that Rudy's reward for their cooperation was saying that he would personally visit them in Ukraine. I'm sure they were psyched about the idea of Rudy showing up at their door, asking to sleep on their futon, and then spending three days talking about cigars and the Yankees and asking them where to find the best salami in Kiev. I'm Jones for from Genoa. Mind if I put my cigar out on your rug? This whole thing is yet another reminder of the central thrust of Republican politics right now, cheating in elections to win. They made it clear they'll do it any way they can, whether it's using the levers of the state to pressure government officials to overturn elections, passing voter suppression laws, or extorting foreign countries. They didn't stop after the Ukraine scandal, and they're not stopping now. It turns out the biggest criminals are the ones in the so-called party of law and order. Oh, they gave them both. There's been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.